Good morning, good morning. It's beautiful, a beautiful Saturday morning here in Texas. And I'm so happy to be with you this morning. And I'm not gonna, pr I'm not gonna pray but about 15 or 20 minutes because I have to get in the car and head to uh, Beaumont to minister to some ladies this morning. So I'm gonna really try to stay within my time today if I possibly can. So we're gonna get right, right to it this morning. Now listen, ladies, uh, as, you're, as you're signing on, there will be, uh, at the top of this broadcast, is gonna be uh, uh, the three words I talked about yesterday, join, subscribe, invite, and give. Join, subscribe, invite, and give. It's, it's a text messaging system. It's gonna allow you to get updates uh, from Jenny and from myself um, all through the 31 weeks that we'll start December 31, I'm sorry, December 3th through 5th, which is the Crown Conference, and then we're going to go for 31 weeks. We've got a plan for 31 weeks. Now, there'll be a plan after that, but that's what God's given us right now. And if you join this text messaging system, then this allows you to kind of stay abreast of, what, of everything that's going on. We're not going to flood your text messages, but it will keep you up to date. So there will be instructions for how to join that. And then we were asking you to, to subscribe to uh, Bob and Jenny Donnelly on YouTube and to me, Callie Ship Gray, on YouTube. And then, of course, keep watching us on Facebook. We're going to start running um, our programs on multiple platforms at the same time coming this next year. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with censorship, so we're just trying to be safe. I also have another link that's going to be involved at the top of this. At the top of this broadcast will give you all these instructions. That is just my Mothers of Zion email list. And you can just put all your info in there. And then I can send you emails or send you text messages or let you know things that are private that I don't necessarily want on the public page. So this is going to give you an opportunity to keep up with what's going on. So all of that instruction, because I don't have a ton of time today, will be at the top of this broadcast. I want you to go on and share the broadcast and say, pray with us now or pray with us on replay. God is healing the heart and soul of America. God is healing the heart and soul of America. There's, there's two things that I felt led to pray about this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to just spend some time. Get your communion ready. There's 230 of you on this morning. Get your communion ready. And I, I want to start with communion today. So I'm going to give you a little time. And I'm just going to pray blessings over you while you're getting your communion ready. Lord, I just... Thank you for 238 beautiful, beautiful women today. I thank you for 238 women that are set aside, that have set their lives aside to totally surrender to your will, purpose, and plan. I thank you for women that, that will fight uh, in the spirit of prayer. That's how we fight. We fight in prayer. We, we fight on our knees. And God, I thank you for women that are laying their lives down to fight where it counts. Not We don't fight flesh and blood, but we fight in prayer. And so, Lord, I thank you for all of these women. I can't imagine uh, any of our lives without your direction, your wisdom, your encouragement, your strength. You, you show us, you help us, you navigate life with us, you, you correct us, you heal us, you give us your perspective. And Lord, we just honor you today. We honor, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you for every uh, time of correction. We thank you, God, that you have gone before us and made the crooked places straight. We thank you for watching over our children. We thank you for the lawsuit breakthroughs that we had this last week. God, it was just, your goodness is beyond anything we can even imagine. Your goodness is, and your mercies are new every morning, and we just thank you for it. So ladies, get your, get your communion ready. Lord, I thank you for this cracker that represents your body. I remember what you did on Calvary, and I ask you to wash me and cleanse me and purge me today. I ask you to wash my family, my children, our church, my spiritual children, God. Anyone that is connected with me, I ask you to wash us and purge us. I ask you to wash and purge our nation. 
We thank you, Lord, that you're already doing it. We give you praise and glory and honor. We give you high praise. We give you praise from the deepest parts of our soul for washing us and cleansing us and washing this nation and bringing this nation to front and center and to holiness in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blood, Lord. Your blood washed me, cleansed me, made me whiter than snow. Your blood is flowing even today, God, and we thank you for your blood. I pray, God, that your blood would flow over every lady that's on this broadcast, all 278 of us this morning, that your blood would flow over them and wash them whiter than snow, that your blood would make everything correct. God, we ask you to let your blood wash over our families, our marriages, our businesses, our children, and our nation, our states, our local government, our state government, our national government. We ask you that your blood would flow over this 2020 election and that it would wash everything whiter than snow and that your will, purpose, and plan would be done. And God, we stand on that today. We stand on that today. I love the, uh, the scripture in Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, in John 21. And I want you to go, and I want you to go read that scripture. Many of you heard me talk about it a little bit the other night. But in John 21, uh, Peter, Peter was out fishing. It was after Jesus had been crucified. It was after Peter, you know, Jesus said, uh, somebody's going to deny me. This was before he was crucified. These were chapters earlier, and he said, one of you is going to deny me. And they're all kind of looking around to see who that would be. And uh, Peter said, if all of these betray you or deny you or denounce you, I'll never deny you. And I really believe he, he, he believed that about himself when he said it. But it was, it was a little bit arrogant. And it was, a, you know, it was a whole lot arrogant. Because here's the deal, we don't know our flesh always. We don't know always what we'll do. We don't always know our, even our hearts. We have to ask God to unveil our hearts and to pull the layers back. So anyway, he, he's, he's somewhat bragging. He said, you know, all these guys can betray you, but I'm not. And, and we know that Jesus told him, no, you want, we, even before the, before the crow sounds, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna deny me three times. And, um, and we know it happened. It happened, and it, and it was terrible. You could, you could hear the anguish in Peter's heart when he realized. I mean, he he was messed up. So he goes back to what he knows. He goes back to fishing. Many times when we've been knocked down, we uh, God's spoken things in our lives, and He's given us dreams and spiritual dreams, and and things that we know that were from heaven, but we make a mistake or we we just mess things up through disobedience, or we mess things up because we fall into a trap, or we mess things up just because we are, we're, we're dealing with our flesh. We're humans. We deal with our flesh. We have, to, we have to constantly submit our flesh to the Spirit of God. So he goes back to what is normal. He just says, I'm, I'm going to go fishing. This is the part about God that is so amazing to me. Okay, the Lord has, by this time, has not only died, but he has risen again. And he is appearing to the disciples. And he is instructing them. And he is giving them instruction for them for the rest of their life. And he is, he, these, are, these are the 12 men that are going to carry the gospel to the whole world. These are the 12 men that are going to write the Bible. These are the 12 men that God is going to use to really set up the cornerstone for everything that we, have, we believe and we have received. So he show, the Lord shows up on the beach making food. In frying fish, just cooking fish. And uh, he begins to minister. He begins to minister to, to Peter. And he begins to talk to him. And he says to him, uh, and you can read the whole chapter, all the details. But he said, Peter, do you love me? And... Peter said, Peter's not as arrogant this time. When you start looking up the meanings of love, he said, I, I love you. I, I, I love you like a friend. I, I love you, but I'm not sure that really what he was saying is I'm not sure I loved you the way I thought I did or I would have never done this. I'm so ashamed of what I've done. 
But he says, yeah, I love you. Then he said, feed my sheep. And then he asked him again, Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, you know, Lord, I, I, I love you. I love you. But this, he's not arrogant anymore. He's been, he's been crushed. He's been, he, he's, he's come face to face with his humanity. He said, Lord, I love you to the best of my ability. But, but evidently, there's some things in me that are twisted or I'd have never done. I mean, he, this is not something he said, but it's implied by the interpretation of the love. And he said, you know I love you. And then he said, feed my sheep. He said it three times. And then he said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. But do you love me more than all of these? Remember and my husband brought this to my attention. He said, when he was in the upper room, the Lord said, Someone, one of you is going to deny me. And Peter said, I won't deny you. All these may, but, it, but I'm not going to. And then he went right out and did it. And then the Lord said, but do you love me more than these? He said, Lord, you know. I, I, I love you, but I, I, don't, I don't trust in me anymore. I don't trust in what I say anymore, necessarily. I don't trust in my flesh. I trust you, and I love you. Then he said, feed my sheep again. Feed my sheep again. And what God is saying to us is, he knows that we, in our best effort to serve him, in our best effort to serve him, with, with all the love that we have in our hearts, in the, in the natural, it is still lacking. It is still lacking. We are still frail without him. Only in him can we do the supernatural exploits. Only by abiding in him can I obey him fully. Only by abiding in him can I come to terms with my, my, uh, my humanity and my weak, the weakness of my bent. Only in him can I be straightened by the power of the Holy Ghost. But he says, Lord, you know. And I want to tell you that you love him. Jesus knows you love him. He understands your bent. He understands that you're working it out. He understands that you're daily submitting. And we can't wait till we think we're perfect to do the will, purpose, and plan of God. That's such a misnomer. That's such, that's not God. We'll, we, we can't wait till we feel like we have all the boxes checked. No, there will always be a box that we need to check. Now, should we be intentionally drawing nigh to the Lord, reading his word, in a, in a heart, in a place of repentance, in a place where God can correct us. Yes, yes, yes. We must live there. But, but Jesus is saying, do you love me? And we're saying back, yes, Lord, I love you to the best of my ability. I'm on a process of loving you more every day. But I, today, God, I submit my whole life to you. And today, I do what you've called me to do. And today, I surrender my will, my purpose, my plans, anything that I think that you have directed me. God, I resubmit it. I resubmit my children. I even submit my love to you for you to perfect my love. God, because I want to love you in a way that is unrelenting. I want to love you in a way that brings such glory to your name. I want to love you in a way that causes me to quickly adjust and course correct when you speak things of correction to my life. I want to love you in a way that brings you such honor where that when men and women see my life, they may not see a perfect Callie because I promise you, if you hang around me very long, you're going to know I'm not perfect. But they'll see a surrendered Callie. They'll see a Callie that loves Jesus with all of her heart. They'll see a Callie that knows I could do nothing that I should never ever have been called to the ministry. God should have called a hundred people before he called me. I was never qualified. It was never meant to be unless Jesus did it. But Jesus qualifies me and Jesus qualifies you and Jesus makes us ready for the kingdom of God and Jesus sets us on a course of healing 
and revival. And Jesus has called you and anointed you. And he's saying to you, do you love me? And your response is, yes, Lord, I love you to the best of my ability. And he's saying to us, feed my sheep. Callie, I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to love the lost. I want you to pray for the lost. God, we pray for America. We pray for the heart and soul of America to be healed. We pray, God, that the, that the revival fires will begin to burn in America. That revival fires will begin to burn in America. That revival fires will begin to burn in our families and in our homes and in our marriages and in our uh, desires and our ambitions. Now, listen, ladies, I'm going to give you a few words of encouragement. We have been called onto the battlefield. We are called for such a time as this. We are a part, we are a part, and I want you to write this, we are a part of a million Esthers and Deborahs that have been called to pray, fast, and seek God for, for the third great awakening, which will result in a billion soul harvest, billion, a billion soul harvest of men and women being saved, healed, delivered by the gospel. We are called to to, to call women to come into this movement and pray with us and fast with us until Roe versus Wade is overturned, until the witchcraft spirit in America is completely broken and dismantled and a million women rising up, declaring holiness and revival and prayer across this nation. We are called and we are called to call those, those other women to come into the movement. That's what we're called. And at the top of this broadcast is going to be all the instructions on what you can do and what I can do and how we can invite people in. And I want you to take the time to read it. We are called, you are called. But we are also called to forgive ourselves and to let our past go and to know that we may be a ragtag group. We may be like the 12 disciples that God built his church on, that they weren't really much to speak of in the way of the world. But your voice has a mat, has has power, and your voice has been called. And by the time God gets through with you, God's going to build His kingdom on top of your obedience. God is going to build His kingdom on top of your surrender. See your surrender and your voice, your surrendered voice, your surrendered life, and your surrendered prayers is more powerful than any army on this earth. Your surrendered voice has the backing and the authority of, a, of the angel armies in heaven. I hope you're hearing me. Your surrendered voice has the backing and the authority of the angel armies that have been sent from heaven. Your surrendered voice has the backing of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when you speak, authority is released into your life and authority is released into your family and authority is released into your church and authority is released into this nation. I love you. The hand of God is on you. You are going to do great exploits. You are called for such a time as this. Pick up your sword, ladies. Pick up your sword. Pick up your torch. Run into battle. We don't back down from battle. We run straight into it. We are not on the defense. We are on the offense. I'm going to ask you to shore up your marriages. I'm going to ask you to shore up your families. I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord to show you any area where there's a crack in the wall, where the enemy, listen, this is no time for us to be sloppy in our marriages. This is no time for us to be sloppy with our language. This is no time for us to be sloppy in our con consecration. This is no time for us to be sloppy with, with our friends or with our children. We must ask Holy Spirit, guard my mouth, guard my mouth, set a watch on my mouth. We must be really tender hearted and really submitted to the Lord. Take the time. Listen, we've got a call and a mandate, but our first call is to the Lord and our second call is to our husbands and our children. And what I, what I mean by that is take the time and, t and be intentional with your husbands and your children and your family. Don't let all that go to hell in a handbasket. Don't let all, listen, put things in order. 
Pray. Put God first. Put you, Because you know what? I pray. I seek God. I'm a better mother. I pray. I seek God. I'm a better wife. I pray. I seek God. I'm a better grandmother. I pray. I seek God. I'm a better pastor. I pray. I seek God. I'm a better friend, a better leader. See, everything comes through my relationship with God. But ladies, we cannot afford for a crack to get in the wall. We must be diligent to love our husbands. We must be diligent to love our family, our friends, our church, the people that God's put in our life. We must be diligent to repent when we've done something wrong. We must be we don't we, we must not be prideful. We must say I'm sorry when I when I hurt you. I'm sorry I did that. Listen, God's girls are repentant. God's girls are humble. We must ha walk in humility. I don't care if we go out and slay a giant. We must go back home and walk in humility with our husbands and our families. And this, you know, I don't care if you go out and you slay, you slay, you slay Goliath, and four hundred thousand people get saved under your ministry. You lay hands on the sick, then grow arms. Go back home and be humble and submitted to your family. Go back home. With everyone around you, be humble and submitted. Ask God to give you a servant's heart. Ask God. To, this is the type of men and women that are going to be used for this third great awakening. Men and women that are surrendered. Men and women that are surrendered. We can't have a mess at home and have miracles in public. We've got to have holiness at home, righteousness at home, and we'll have miracles in public. And I plead the blood of Jesus over our families. I plead the blood of Jesus over our marriages. I plead the blood of Jesus over our children, biological and spiritual. I plead the blood of Jesus over our churches. I plead the blood of Jesus over the fivefold ministry. I plead the blood of Jesus over America. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you. You are going to be like the men of Issachar. You're going, to, you're going to understand and discern the times and the seasons. You're going to understand and discern what your husband needs, what your family needs, what your friends need. You're going to even discern what you need. And, and when you need to rest, and when you need to just pull away. Listen, let's don't be over-consumed. Let's don't be over-consumed with social media. Pull away from it. Put it away. I put mine in another room. I have to. I have to put mine in another room. Yesterday, I wanted some time with my husband. We wanted to go on a date. We wanted to go spend some time. He needed time with me. I needed time with him. We needed to talk. We needed to laugh. We needed to watch an episode of Heartland. We love this little show called Heartland. We needed to just be husband and wife. So I had to take my phone. I had to put it in another room because every time I get hundreds of text messages and emails and, and they're all important. But they're not more important than our home and our family. So just put your phone aside. Take your time with Jesus. Take your time with your husband and children. You are amazing. You're amazing women. And God has got great exploits ahead for us. So all the instructions for join, subscribe, invite, and give are all on will all be on the top of this broadcast. I want to encourage you to get your ticket to crown. Listen, ladies. Crowned is going to be an encounter like nothing ever, ever you've ever been in before. I know it. And I'm just encouraging you if, you, if there's any possible way you can get here and you feel God has called you, go on and get here. Do it by faith. God will provide the money. If, if some of you need some help, I would love for you to reach out to me. God bless. We love you.